Well, thank you guys again for coming. I appreciate it. Um, hard fought game last week. I think going on the road at Lamar. Uh, it was a tough game in the first half. Uh, just, you know, again, I thought uh, we came out in, in the second half and just, you know, we popped a couple runs and sprung the game open. Uh, I thought a lot of it was, you know, I, I credit the offensive line, our, our receivers blocking downfield, total team effort to, to set a new school record for us for rushing yards. Great night in the second half. Uh, and just, uh, you know, continued to stay after them. I thought a lot of credit. We, we played a lot of guys early. I thought uh, when the second half came and it started raining, we, we committed to running the football and staying with it. That our guys did a great job of executing plays and, 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 and getting after them and being physical up front and dominating the line of scrimmage against a very good uh, football team against a very good defense. Um, I thought defensively we played well, really well versus the run, holding them to 69 yards. And um, the biggest difference was obviously defensively in the second half we really got to them, uh, created some pressure. Not just when we got, we get five sacks on the night, but there's a lot of times we had, we had pressure and, and, and didn't get a place to throw the football. And the guys did a great job of getting after the quarterback, who was again a quarterback who's very accurate when you give him time to, to throw in the pocket. So. Um, it was a good win. I think it was a good win overall for us. Go on the road and, and win in the fashion we did in a physicality play. Um, and it obviously sets up a, a, a huge game versus UCA. Uh, that's one thing we know about winning is that the, the more you win, the, the bigger the games get. And you kind of, we've been down this road before. And we've been in a situation, so we understand what's in front of us, that uh, this is a huge game. And I'm thankful really to have it at home and, and uh, have the home field advantage. I think we'll be huge in this ball game. Especially in homecoming, I think we'll have a great crowd, and the way our fans have responded in the past, I think this will be, a, again, be a very tough place for somebody to come in here and play. And I'll open it up for questions. When you looked at um, film on the game from, from Saturday, I know one thing that I noticed that uh, in the second half, uh, it seemed like the offensive line and defensive line, just playing the trenches, really picked up, and that's when the, the difference uh, really came. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think I think we really we dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball in the second half. We be able to run the football and, and like I said, and be able to stop the run and get after the quarterback the way we did. And uh, and there's a lot of guys in that picture. There's a lot of guys that got playing time that stepped in and played really well. And I think that's when you get guys that are coming off the bench and playing, you know, uh, tech and coming off the bench and having big time games and players the game, you know. Uh, Herbert Harris, who you know has been split in time with Drew Masseed, he comes in and has 10 tackles for the night. That's that's huge. That really helps your defense when they're when those guys are playing at a really high caliber. You know, when you bring up his, you know, Josue Miranda, on the offensive line comes in and, and uh, his, you know has been sp split in time with Joe Graves and he comes in and grades the highest. Uh, he's great. He graded the highest of all offensive linemen. Played really physical. Played great football. I think it just set the tone up front. I think we really challenged ourselves on the offensive line to how hard could we play. And uh, you know, and again, it was. I think we played really hard the first half, and I think it was just really, really kind of warmed down and, and uh, continued through the second half. Kind of uh, you know, touches on the, 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 that, that concept that you talked about. You won games a lot of different ways this week. Maybe it was the offense, you know, while the yeah. defense played well too. But more than anything, it seems like the way you guys win games is, is to wear people down with your depth. And, 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 you know, and this was another case where the fourth quarter, you guys you know, were the dominant team, and it, it really speaks to that advantage that you guys have developed with depth. Yeah. Well, that yeah, and, and I think you know you great, our coaches do a great job. I think coaching those guys and getting guys ready to play, and that's kind of I and mean, that is our philosophy is that we're we're here to set a tempo, and you know, and some of you can, you know if it's a tempo you're not used to playing at, you can play it for a while, but if you're not doing used to doing that every week, um, and, you know it wears on you, and, and it's hard to stay with that for four quarters. So, um, you know, well, there's plenty of things we got to clean up, and there's things that we got to do better, and we can, we can play a lot better, than we are. Uh, I don't think we've even began to hit our stride of how, how good we're, we're capable of playing. Um, and, uh, but I think we are, we are finding ways to win ball games. And, and, uh, uh, and, but when you can do it on the road, especially, that's huge. What are your thought process about not hitting your stride is not getting off to better starts in the first half. But when you do do that, when you marry them together, how much better you're going to be that you, you seem to really kick it up. Northwestern, you know, two lane lead now, just you become really the second half. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to be able to start the games fast and do that. And it's really the it's the mental mistakes you see early, and which, which is credit to again our, our players taking coaching during the game, 
Um, and we've seen it, and we've seen it several times. That sometimes we're seeing people come out and do. We're not sure how they're going to play us on defense. You know, uh, they do. You know, and, and we see on a weekly basis. Usually, we see somebody doing something different to slow us down or, or something. And so we got to make those adjustments. You know, and you got to get off the field and get a couple chance times to talk to your guys, offensively, defensively, and, and be able to say, hey, here's what's happening. This is what we need to do. And um, I think our guys are taking coaching as we're going through the game. We're getting better at it. Um, but the biggest things we can't do is do things that are self-inflicted wounds I think early. Those are the things I'm really worried about more than just self-inflicted wounds like dropping a ball, fumble turnovers, uh, uncontested routes, those type of things that we got to be able to eliminate early. I mean, that's not a basis of scheme. That's just a part of execution. So it's not being ready, to, not ready to play? Right? In terms of I don't think it's energy. ready to play. No, it's not that. I mean, I think our guys are showing great energy. They're doing the same thing. I mean, I don't think it's any... It's not I'm not going in there and giving them a Vince Lombardi speech at halftime or anything like that. It's, you know, they're ready to go. And most of the time it's talking, it's calming them down and tell you, look, this is what's happening. Here's the situation. And this is what you got to do. And our guys uh, have taken coaching very well, and, and I think they're being just on the fly. What did, um, what did Friday, I mean, for Saturday, I should say, uh, say about the, the Friday your team? Obviously, you know, after halftime, um, you know, they came out with the first. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just part of it. You got to keep playing, and the more you play, you know, if you're executing, then you're going to get your plays, and you're going to have success. And um, I think the biggest part I'd say is this: is they didn't panic. We didn't panic at the half. We felt we had control. You know, the score didn't indicate as, as bad as we, we felt we had control. Um, we just got to, you know, again, you got to get down there. You got to put points on the board, you know, and you don't want to settle for field goals all the time. Uh, there because you know it probably easily could have been at least a two touchdown lead at the halftime, and it wasn't. And uh, you know, so I think our guys just did a great job of just playing. And they're a good team. Don't get me wrong. I think Lamar is a very good football team, and they're much improved. I thought from last year, uh, they're doing a very good job, uh, and they're going to beat some people and they're going to surprise some people. If anybody takes that as an indication of, of Lamar's capable of playing, I think they're going to get they're going to get shocked. Well, yeah, I mean they're, 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 they change schemes on both sides of the ball, so I mean both schemes are totally uh, different from what, the, what they've been doing, obviously. Um, so I mean it's nothing that we haven't seen before. We know what it is, you know. Um, what exactly will they hang their hat on on Saturday? I'm not sure. I mean, we have ideas of what they're going to do, but I know this. I mean, they, they want to run the football. That's their, their identity, and that's so they're going to try to find ways to run that football. And uh, you know, we got to be great up front. And they're a physical offensive line. You say very physical offensive line. Uh, they come off the ball uh, very hard. They're very well coached. Um, they got some couple great playmakers at the wide receiver position. Um, so you know, it, you know, they're they're digging a good offense, and obviously they're doing it. They're scoring 40 points a game. That's you know, and uh, you know, defensively, I think they're, they're you know, uh, we see great defensive lines in the Southland Conference. I mean, that's one of the things that's probably a mark that every week you go in. There's every he's got some some tremendous talent up front, and this is no different. UCA's got their front sevens is, is really good. Um, the defensive line is big, physical, active. The linebackers can run. They're really good players. I think you know. Um, but you know we we got to execute and, and and see who's the better team on Saturday. How do they utilize 13 and 15? Uh, well, it gives a little more of a run element. The other guy's more of a bigger passer. It's not yeah, Howard 13. Howard is probably the more uh, handles more of the passing duties. Uh, whereas uh, Reed 15 is more of a uh, doing the quarterback run game, quarterback power, the option game with him. And, and trying to get him out there and, and, and run and they get you an extra blocker that way and be able to run the football and keep you honest on defense. Is it easier to defend a two quarterback team because maybe you get a sense of what might be coming? Um, I don't know if it's easier because you've got to have two game plans. When one's in, this is what they're doing. When this one's in, this is what they're doing. Um, you know, when, when, you know, and they both can run. Don't get me wrong. They both can run and they both can throw. So. Uh, I don't think it's going. It, it doesn't make. It's not going to make that much of a difference in what they do. No. How much uh, you know playing against a team that you know, does average the most points in the South? And, uh, I heard you speak about it in the opening statement. How happy are you to 
you know, kind of have the home crowd behind you to, to face an offense like that and have that crowd noise to possibly help your defense out. Well, it, it's going to be huge. I mean, I think anytime, I think anytime we can play here, you know, again, that's what we kind of preached it for two years. We were trying to create that environment, a home field advantage, just to be a tough place for people to come and play, and it is, and it's been that way. Um, so I think it, it, that thing, you, that part of it, you really got chalked up to us. That's in our favor. Uh, the noise factor, the excitement, the, the emotions our kids will play with on Saturday is obviously different here at home than it is when we're on the road. And, uh, you know, in that part, you gotta, it's obviously got to give us a huge advantage, I think, in that part of it. The other part is, you know, yeah, they're a high-scoring offense. They're really, really good. Um, we're pretty digging good on defense. And, you know, uh, there's a reason why we're leading the show. You know, we're, we're, the to we're leading the conference in total defense, and there's a reason for it. And I think our guys are going to look forward to the challenge and see what, uh, see what they can do. Sort of a straight ahead sort of running game, or what, you know, what is he, you know, can you get an idea what, what he might have been referring to? No. I mean, everybody, I mean, uh, um, maybe their, their commitment to running the football is the way it could be talking about because, I mean, they're, you know, they're running power and zone and, you know, speed sweep and uh, we call the, you know, the power read pass and, uh, and all that stuff, and the passing game is. Um, very similar to was was last year, and I don't think there's a whole lot of changes to that. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what would become on a different part of it. I'm thinking, you know, probably the power running type thing that they did, they you know, really come straight at you. Yeah. Yeah. That could, yeah. Cool, you know, well, most today, today you see now you spread offenses. Everything's east and west, and, and there's not a whole lot of downhill coming at you to come get you. I think it's one of the things that probably separates us from everybody else. Is everything's not east and west. It's we're gonna we're gonna you know we're gonna come at you and try to be physical at the point of attack. We're spread. Yeah, we spread it around and, and by formation, but we're gonna try to be physical and come at you and run the football. I think they're very similar. I think they're very similar to us, probably offensively. Yeah. With the PCA's defense, eleven interceptions. Uh, what are they doing to, to make that kind of thing? pressure on the quarterback? I mean, you got the the, uh, the ninety uh, Woodard. What were, what were, I'm sorry, I don't want to butcher his name, but uh, he's a great player. I mean, he's phenomenal, and he he's harassing court. I mean, if you if you get in third and long, you know, you better know where he's at, and and you got to get more than one on him. Um, he's probably one of the spirit, best pass rushers in the conference. And if he's not sacking him, he's harassing him. He's knocking him down, and that's probably you know we always say you know, the best. Pass defense is a pass rush. When he's down, he's knocked down, or he can't throw the ball in time, he can't do things. That's the best way to do it. And he's forcing a lot of guys. I think, uh, and it's not just him. They're good up front. And I think the best thing that's that's that's, that's helping them is their their pass rush is forcing you know quarterbacks to throw the ball when they don't want to and try to get rid of the ball. And they're getting the ball under duress. And when you're doing that, you're gonna make bad decisions. And the timing may not be right. Or you throw a little short or a little long or throw a little off. So. That's what the biggest thing to me is they're, they're very good up front and they come after you. How do you um, prepare for two talented receivers like a Desmond Lewis and a Desmond Smith who are around the, the league leaders in the interceptions and in yards? Yeah, we were going to try to deflate their balls before the game and see if that helped. Uh, no, they're, they're, they're good. I mean, we knew that. We saw them last year. They're very talented. Uh, what we got to do is really, you know, we got to be like every week. You got to execute the coverage, and, and we got to be able to learn to know where they're at and, and how to give guys certain help and, and be able to give them help and, and play them different ways. We're not going to play them the same way all the time. We're going to play them, you know, in out, one under, one on top. You know, uh, we're going to mix it up. And we're going to press them, and we're going to play off, and we're going to play give them various different looks and see what they can handle. And and uh, uh, I think our, again it goes back to our, I think our secondary is pretty good, and, and they're going to have to, you know. Man up and, and accept the challenge and, and go after them. And I was going to say, you know, when facing two wide receivers like that, how much does it help to have the depth that, um, that the Lions have? You know, well, it'll be huge because I think on that part of it, you know, it is every week. It's a big advantage to be able to have guys, you know, you know, Harlan Miller back, Denzel Thompson, Derek Raymond, Ryan Seegers. Those guys, you know, at the corner position, you know, they're very talented. And uh, again, that you know, that it helps drastically, and so, and they're going to have to play well because these guys are both—they're both very, really good. Uh, Harlem started Saturday night. Yeah. Kind of uh, 
telling maybe that uh, you, you took the, the reigning player of the week and, and, and benched him? Huh? No, well, actually, Denzel started on the other side. Oh, he started on the other side. Yeah, he started on the other side. And then those, those, those three really split the reps, right. so they just right. kind of rotated in and out. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, we've got talented players, you know. So, I think they're accepting it. And a lot of, hopefully, you know, when you get rotated, it, it, it prevents the opportunity for them to, to get wore down and they be able to play, you know, at the, the, the peak of their game. That's what you want. You would rather play, you know, 40, 45 snaps to peak of your game than play 70 snaps and, you know, 20 of them you're, you're, you're pulling up the reins and you're not playing as hard as you can because you're trying to save yourself. That's, you know I mean? That hurts us all. So I think that depth allows us, even our, our guys out there, each each one that hits the field to play harder. Don't worry about getting tired. We got somebody. If you're tired, we'll get somebody in there for you. Is there a matchup you find particularly intriguing about or telling about this game? I mean, the wide receivers on your on your DBs is really interesting, but their offensive line against your defensive line. So I think that's probably the matchup. Is that the one? Yeah. I think their own line plays extremely hard. Uh, and you can go back several games and you watch Texas Tech and they're, they're rolling Texas Tech up and moving them and it's, you know, wow, you know, they, they play inspired football and that's what you got to see. They, I expect them to come in here and play inspired football. To me, you look at this thing on the map, uh, I think they got to be telling their team that this is it. This is the conference championship. You know, if we can get this one, you know, uh, they got their, their, well, they are. If you, whoever gets this one is the lead, probably is the lead dog in the race. Everybody else is playing catch up. No doubt. I mean, I, I, yeah, that's just, you know, go and compete for championships, you got to win. So, um, and there's nothing bigger than the one right in front of us. So this one's huge.